Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to another episode of the Skywatcher What's Up webcast. We check up everything from equipment to what's up in the nighttime sky to helpful tips and tricks on observing and imaging. And of course, at the last episode of the month, we take a look and sit down with someone uh, who discusses their specialty in the field of astronomy. So for those of you who are joining us today, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for being here. I you know, appreciate you again, hanging out with us. Um, this episode, of course, we're talking about holiday accessories and gift ideas. And uh, as many of you know, this is going to be an interesting one because of everything that's been going on, but we'll try our best with it. But uh, if you like what you see here, Are we better? There we go. What the heck happened there? This is why we can't have nice things. Apparently what we need to get for the holiday season is a new, more reliable mic, even though it's been working just fine. So, sorry about that. Um, I'll have to take a look at that. All the cables should be pretty pinned down. Um, anyway, as we were saying, before we so rudely interrupted. Okay, so today we're talking about uh, holiday gift ideas for the astronomer in your life. Uh, I understand right now everything's kind of strange. And uh, let me just discuss that real quick. So, astronomy in the holidays, 2021 edition. So, right now, um, astronomy is going to be a little challenging, as it ha may have been if you're looking for new equipment this year. It's been kind of a trek to find anything. Um, no, as a manufacturer, we're not doing this on purpose, as some of you may assume, but no. Um, there's a lot of long back orders right now. Shipping delays are causing a lot of problems. Uh, many telescopes, especially large items, have backlogs that are months long. And as distributors and manufacturers, everyone's doing the best they can to make sure this gets handled. Um, but if you're looking for something in a pinch... Um, and time for the holidays, it's going to be very, very difficult uh, right now to do that unless you're strategic about it. And that's kind of what we're hoping to do today is kind of just cover maybe some things that you can get. It might not be this big box or a brand new telescope. Sometimes you can score one if you know what you're looking for, depending on who you're looking for. But uh, the big question, of course, is what does one do in a case like this? Now, I understand a lot of you that are watching probably already have your equipment. Maybe you don't are maybe you this episode doesn't really apply to you, but I'm hoping this will at least help somebody uh, with some gift ideas and how to navigate uh, all of this. So the big question, at least that comes up a lot, we get a lot of phone calls and emails about this, is you know I'm trying to get something for somebody who's into astronomy. I know nothing about it, so. A couple questions I find you have to ask is, who's it for? Are we talking about kids? Maybe a beginner? Um, are they experienced? 
you know you kind of want to figure out where the interest level is going to lie obviously with kids it can be a short-term thing maybe they will get interested in it that's how i turned out um maybe the beginner is already started and they want to expand their equipment lineup uh, maybe they're experienced and they've had their eye on something for a while and you just want them to shut up about it. We've all been there, haven't we? So, um, we all want something. Uh, another big thing that you want to ask, especially in this day and age, because everybody wants to share, is astrophotography a consideration? Um, this is a big thing that I find with uh, beginners, um, or especially people who are just getting started, um, I got this for, I got this telescope, I got a daub, I got whatever, and I want to do astrophotography with it. And you find that it's going to be very limiting. So this is a big question you want to ask if you're actually considering a telescope at all is astrophotography an inkling of yours, because if it is, you really want to make sure that you're kind of preparing yourself for the long term to support that interest. Um, I love Dobsonians building a big dob right now i've owned several um i love deep sky visual with those but they're not really intended for astrophotography purposes so it's difficult when you're trying to explain that to someone who maybe doesn't understand that so uh dobsonians give you a lot of bang for the buck they're excellent but they're not great for astrophotography so that's something you want to ask um this is something that will really help you narrow down which part of the fork in the road you're going to want to go down um, with this. Uh, do they have equipment already? That's a big thing because, you know, if, if it is somebody who already has a telescope and especially let's say you got a telescope a year ago, last holiday season and over 2021, you've gotten really into it. I find this is my favorite group of people to work with because they're excited about it. They probably have had some time to build up a wish list of what they want to take a look at. Maybe they want to add something to their lineup or upgrade that eyepiece or add a filter or whatever. Um, definitely take a look at their their list um, of things. But if they already have equipment, it can be helpful, especially if they're just kind of getting into it. Um, and like I said, kind of jump the gun there is there something they've been asking for uh obviously a lot of this is very basic knowledge for many of us um but if you're you're not sure how to navigate that you know maybe ask that person in your life who's looking for it um what cool things would you like to add to your 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 astronomy equipment list um and I like to break this up in two sections because we have to, because there's two different uh, sides of the coin here. First off, we're going to talk about visual because visual is a lot easier to navigate than astrophotography is. Um, so, of course, everybody knows what they want for the holidays. And this is it right here. We all want that big 36 inch or for everybody else who's not in the U.S. because the U.S. can't get it together. Uh, a 0.9 meter uh, daub under amazingly dark skies. That's that's it. We're all done. That's that's it for visual. Um, I think everyone's fine with that. And uh, with that being said, that's the. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but everybody would like a really big daub at that point. But obviously, that's that's not a reality. So, uh, jumping away from our pipe dream and shifting into actual gift ideas for uh, the holidays that is not a $20,000 telescope under very dark skies, probably far away from home. Uh, basic accessories can be a big help. Um, like I said, especially if you've been a, a beginner or a novice and you're now finding that this hobby is for you, great, welcome, we're happy to have you. Um, you're starting to expand your lineup of, you know, once you kind of have an idea of where you want to go with the hobby, you know, we'll stick with the visual guys right now or ladies, sorry. Um, eyepieces. I remember when I was getting started and still do to this day, 
uh, there's always an eyepiece that's going to do something that you want. And eyepieces are great because there's so many quality lenses on the market nowadays that, uh, and they're nice because they're a tiny little box too. So you can make someone's day by getting them that eyepiece that they've been looking at. Now you don't have to go top shelf or do something crazy like my eyepiece set here, which by the way, I get a lot of compliments on this eyepiece case of mine. This does not happen overnight. This have, took place over years of slowly upgrading each lens to where I want it. So if you're getting into this and you see someone who's got a really crazy awesome setup, that doesn't happen overnight. Just, you know, be patient. One piece at a time. Uh, but eyepieces are great. Uh, they're... And, I don't know what the availability of a lot of this stuff is, so you have to kind of look around, but eyepieces you can find here and there. Sometimes you can even score one off the used market, talk to a telescope shop. Maybe they've got a very nice condition one laying around, but they're a good stocking stuffer for certain ones. Obviously, hiding a Teleview 31 Nagler in a stocking is a little difficult, but if you have a big enough stocking, why not? Just make sure it's really well pinned to the wall because they're heavy. Uh, these are excellent for really any observer. Most of us have something on our, our wish list that we'd like to have, you know, whether it's like, a maybe you're upgrading from a nice set of plossels, um, and you've been looking at that Teleview or Explore Scientific or Pentax eyepiece. You want to upgrade from the kit lenses that are included, you know, a nice eyepiece is a good place to start. You can see they're not that big. Uh, maybe you're a really advanced observer and you want someone to get you a nice Brandon eyepiece um, for that planetary viewing that you want to maximize uh, your capabilities with. Um, maybe you really, really, I'm going to try to do this without dropping any of these. Um, maybe you really, really want to go out and maximize it and you want to get the whole set of Brandon eyepieces. So um, it's, it's kind of here nor there at that point. It's really just seeing, try to play chess with a half dozen optics I have laying on this desk and not knock anything over because I'll need it later. Great. Um, you know, anything basic like that um, is, is good. And it doesn't even have to be like top shelf stuff like we had mentioned here. Even something as simple as maybe you don't have a night maybe you just need a little eyepiece it's even a little tiny eyepiece can really make someone's day depending on where they're at in the hobby um being able to expand their repertoire of what they're able to do is exciting because the first thing you want to do is now you want to go out and observe with your telescope which is exactly what we all want to do we want to get out we want to go observe we still have some awesome planets up we've got venus We've got Saturn, we've got Jupiter, the moon looks great right now. We've got comets all over the freaking place. Um, so giving that eyepiece is kind of a cool uh, thing to expand it because it's getting that person out there enjoying the hobby that they really enjoy. So um, I think eyepieces are a great thing. Um, they're always worth the investment. They're nothing big. You can hide them really easily, wrap them. It looks like a little quaint box under the tree or wherever, a uh, holiday or... Uh, going with and that can make a big difference to an observer is getting an eyepiece they've had their eye on another thing that's really good is filters filters are very small easy to hide and much like eyepieces they expand your capabilities of your telescope greatly um, especially this time of year where you have uh, all kinds of bright nebulas up um, or maybe you are going to a dark sky site and there's all kinds of cool things that you want to see. All of these accessories are great because they expand their capabilities of your observing uh, uh, capabilities. Sorry, there's probably better words for that. but um, So let me just break this down. Filters I would consider. Um, and some of you maybe have these. Some of you may not have these. Um, first, right off the bat, maybe you've had a telescope and now you know you really like it, you want to get into it further, the first filter I always recommend is a UHC filter or some variant of that. There's a lot of different companies out there that make filters. Um, it's, it's definitely something worth getting to. So 
Um, a UHC filter is a great addition, especially if you've got a telescope and you're observing uh, from your backyard. A UHC filter is going to help fight that light pollution and expand your observing capabilities um, with that. Already have a UHC? Oh, well, an Oxygen 3 filter would be my next recommendation. Now you're really getting into a narrowband filter. It's going to help those nebulas pop. Uh, the Orion Nebula looks great with it. Um, we still have the dumbbell up right now. That looks great. There's all kinds of stuff that an Oxygen 3 filter is excellent at. And you're expanding the, the trio of filters I highly recommend. Um, so O3, if they already have, maybe they have a nice set of eyepieces going on. Maybe they have a UHC. An Oxygen 3 filter would be my next recommendation for that. Um, expanding that observing capability. And uh, last on the list is the H-beta filter. Um, H-beta filter is the horse head filter, um, which also means you need to go to dark sky sites and have a large enough telescope to be able to see the horse head. But there's plenty of other cool things that an H-beta does. Um, it's kind of the last of the big three, UHC, O3, and H-beta are the three filters I always recommend having in a serious deep sky observer's kit. Um, with that, you can handle anything up there um, at that point. So those would be my three. Now, another filter that I think is really good, especially for a beginner, um, is a polarizing filter. I am not a big fan of lunar filters. Uh, I like a polarizer cause they're, they allow for multi-purpose capability. Um, they work good on planets. They work good on the moon. It's a great filter to have. So Three filters to have for deep sky would be UHC, O3, H, beta, and then have a polarizer in there. Those are the four filters I would recommend having um, in your set. All of those can be found for under $200, uh, depending. That's for like a two-inch filter, um, but you can get inch and a quarter uh, cheaper. Um, so that's what I would recommend there. Those are all great additions uh, for an observer's uh, kit if they don't have that. All those I feel would make a big difference in your observing capabilities and allow you to really expand even further um, in the hobby. So that's whenever you can expand someone's kit, it it it's exciting because it's just new capabilities that you can do. Um, I didn't put solar filters in here. You should always use correct filters to when observing the sun in extreme safety. Um, I didn't want to put solar filters in here because solar filters are very, very particular. And uh, unless you really know what you're doing and the person you're buying for, you know exactly what they need. That's the only time you should get one. But I don't recommend just willy nilly buying a solar filter for someone that's uh, a bit dangerous and you really need to know what you're talking about with that. So I don't recommend solar filters, especially for holiday gifts unless the person you're talking to has clearly stated everything that they need to get that. So just leave that for, give them some money and let them go buy it themselves. Never observe the sun on your own. Make sure you know what you're doing. Got it. Great. Now that we're all clear. Um, here's some weird thing that people don't know about anymore. Um, I have been talking as my full self this entire time. I'm sorry. Let me go back here real quick. Here, just to give you my slide. Um, so filters, UHC, O3, H-beta, polarizer, all great options. Uh, we talked about eyepieces. You guys saw that. So sorry you didn't see my slide. I worked so hard on that slide. Um, here's something that no one knows about, a book. What is that? Ancient technology from faint ruins long ago. Um, no, books are a great thing to have. The nice thing about books is they don't need a freaking battery. Um, so you can have a book. The new Backyard Astronomer's Guide, the fourth edition, just came out last year, or this year, I'm sorry. And that those books are awesome. They have so much good information. Every astronomer should have one. It's just a great reference guide to everything. And now being the fourth edition, it's been updated with a lot of the recent technology changes and cameras and all kinds of stuff. Um, this, if you're getting someone, if you've managed to find a telescope this year, this is a great addition to that telescope. Probably the best accessory you can ever get for a telescope is a book to tell you and help you navigate certain things. Whether that 
is something like this guide or maybe it's a star atlas or whatever uh, there's tons of books out there it's excellent for every level of person um, but yeah the backyard astronomers guide fourth edition is out i need to get that copy i have the third edition which was very good but the fourth edition will be uh, a little bit more up to date for a lot of the more modern things that we see but there's plenty excuse me of awesome books that are available out there and a book is a great thing no matter what to have because a lot of times you got to reference something i know you have a phone or a device but there's something about cracking open that book and being like ah yes this so uh that's always good uh software and apps um this is a little bit more helpful in the imaging side of the coin which we'll get to but uh for software for uh visual maybe someone got an ipad maybe someone has an ipad um sky safari pro is awesome great app maybe they want the pro version it's not that it's kind of expensive for an app but it's worth it in my opinion because it handles everything maybe they've been eyeing sky safari pro maybe get them that for the holidays um i started working with starry night pro not to be mixed up with um sky safari very similar program but um starry night's a very nice planetarium program for a computer uh maybe check that out there's probably some other softwares out there that i've missed I'm sorry, I can't nail everything down. Um, here's one that gets everyone in a tizzy, clothes. Um, and speaking of clothes, uh, that's not there yet. Uh, Skywatcher Threadless store is up. We've got some cool new t-shirts and all kinds of stuff. Long sleeves, long sleeves are great this time of year when you're cold and you're freezing, um, unless you're in the Southern Hemisphere where it's not winter. Um, but we've got all kinds of cool shirts up there. Go ahead and check that out. But clothes are a great option. If you order now, I think you could have it by the holidays. Uh, I don't know. I don't run the Threadless store. Um, so there's that. Now, another thing that I think is kind of neat is experiences. Um, depending on where you're at, I know not everybody has access to this. And with, yes, COVID's still a thing. Um experiences can be kind of neat um local observatories generally have private viewings that you can set up or just going to an observatory can be really neat um you know mcdonald observatory uh lowell observatory kit peak mount lemon sky center uh, oh mount wilson palomar um depending on where you're at obviously but there's plenty of cool places that you can go or plan a trip to a dark sky site I saw some people saying that, you know, plan an, an outing or a family outing to share that with. Um, and something, there's a couple things I forgot to put in here um, that I realized this morning. So I'm going to talk about that. But um, another thing that can be really fun, because I think everybody should have one of these, is a nice pair of binoculars. This is my daughter just hanging out with one of our pair of binoculars that we have laying around the house. Um, binoculars are a really nice thing just to have. Everyone can enjoy them. I'm not big on binocular observing, but having a nice uh, pair of binoculars around the house is always a great thing to just go out and check out the night sky with. So, Or if they're getting started on, on pair of binoculars and maybe a book on binocular observing um, can do that. So uh, definitely check that out. Um, binoculars are always a good thing. And uh, I did have this up for a minute ago. I meant to put this in here. A good collimator. If you have a Dobsonian or a Newtonian or most things, a good collimator works really well. I have the Hotec collimators. I also have a Botter. Or botter. Um, I have a bunch of collimators because I do this professionally. Hotec is a very, very nice collimator. They're not too expensive, but if you've got a Dobsonian or a Newtonian, one of these is great. Another thing that I think is really cool from Hotec, which I need to get a new one actually uh do they have it the uh, hotec flashlights are really cool as well i need a new one of these actually someone's watching um these do have a green laser pointer in them please be very very careful with any laser pointers in the nighttime sky period um don't be stupid about it this is why we can't have nice things uh 
but these lights are really cool. They're water resistant. They have white light, red light. They're a very awesome piece of kit. So that's always a cool thing too. Um, if you're looking for a nice, uh, cool gift, a, a really good flashlight is something that I think many of us forget about. Um, I forget mine all the time. So I ran mine into the ground. These things are built like a tank, but those are really neat to have too. So anyway, there's some ideas on there as well. Um, yes, Ernie Jacobs in the chat. I went brain dead there. Howie Gladder laser collimators are phenomenal laser collimators, but they are expensive. But you get what you pay for on them too. So Hotec or Howie Gladder laser collimators, uh, rest in peace, Howie, um, are awesome. A good laser collimator, especially if you're a visual observer using a Dobsonian, is a must. There's a lot of cheaper options on the market. They do work, but I've also had a fair amount of people get a crappy laser collimator that was out of alignment and then their telescope was out of alignment. So investing in a good laser collimator, while not super exciting, is going to make sure your telescope is working well. So that's always a good gift idea too. So that kind of wraps up my visual recommendations. Um, I'm sure I left some ideas out, but that's kind of the general stuff right there. Um, so hopefully that helps. Now, imaging, also known as the money pit. Um, this has a lot of avenues to go down because everyone wants to spend a bunch of money in this part of the hobby. Um, there are a wide range of options for astrophotography. And this is where you want to have a really good understanding of that person's interest levels. Um, because everything in, in astrophotography has multiple digits in the price lit in the price. So, um, so they can be a little expensive, um, but definitely make sure you know what you're asking for. Uh, question in the chat, the Hotec lasers, they have one specific for Schmidt Cassegrains. It's kind of complicated. Um, the regular laser collimators are basically for Newtonians, um, and, uh, are for Newtonians and Dobsonians, which are the same thing, but, um, they do have a collimator for Schmidt Cassegrain, uh, but you'll want to reach out to them. It's a little complicated on that. Uh, imaging gifts. Uh, first one that I think is really good. We're really known for it. Um, star trackers. Star trackers are awesome because everybody can use one at some point if you're into astrophotography. Um, these are good for all levels, particular for photographers. Maybe you have a photographer, a general photographer, who's looking to get into ast uh, astrophotography. A star tracker is a great place to start. Um, this pairs well with nearly any camera, and I'm not just promoting ours as the star adventure. It is our webcast, so we could do whatever we want, but there are plenty of great star trackers on the market. There's uh, the Ioptron trackers. There's our trackers, the star adventures. Um, there's Move, Shoot, Move, I think, is another. There's a bunch of them out there, so whatever. Pick your poison, whichever way you want to go. Ours is the best. Um is a great way to go. Um, these are also small and easy to tote around, but um, these are really the foundation for astrophotography because they show you what it's like to uh, align to the North Star, get acquainted with that. Um, but these are a great little thing um, to have. Even if you're not into astrophotography, it's a great grab and go system because it gives you a tracking platform that you can put a small telescope on and go anywhere with. So, um, advanced imagers like these because they can do something while they're taking hours and hours and hours of exposure, which is a lot like watching grass grow. Um, or uh, you can do something like this and take your SLR or mirrorless camera out there and take some cool pictures out there. So a star tracker is an awesome piece of kit to have for just about anybody uh, because anybody can really appreciate one of these. They're not super expensive, but they're a few hundred dollars. Um, just make sure you kind of know what accessories you're going to need with any particular tracker. Um, that way, whoever you're getting it for, it'll be good to go, um, out of the box. So star trackers are probably my number one thing for astrophotography because they're just so usable for so many different applications. Um, not just astrophotography filters. 
I like filters. Um, filters are fun because we've already talked about filters for astrophotography or uh, visual uh, use, but um, ex filters, again, expand the capabilities of, you know, who's ever using it. Uh, basic light pollution filters can be great for uh, imagers, especially if you're using a one-shot color. I know someone asked about this. Um, they are worth the investment. If you're using a one-shot color, it's almost required if you're in town. Which one do I have here? This is not the one we're talking about yet. Here it is. Um, but there's all kinds of cool filters out there. Uh, the one that you see up on the screen there is a Nisi natural night filter. Those are for SLR and mirrorless camera lenses. They make them in all different sizes. That's kind of a cool piece of kit, especially if you're a nightscape photographer um, or you have someone who's a nightscape photographer. The Nisi filters um, thread right up on front of the lens. Those are great um, for that. Go check them out. Um, if you're actually shooting one shot color on a telescope, you know, uh, basic light pollution filter. You can get these from really anybody. This is an Optolong L Pro, which is a very nice filter. Works great for, um, you know, one shot color cameras. It works very good in town. Uh, there's the Chroma Low Glow filter. Um, I have one of those. Those are very, very nice. Um, then there's the astronomic CLS filters. There's a bunch of them out there, but a nice light pollution filter. They're not too spendy, even for a two inch one. I think they're a little over a hundred bucks. Um, not too spendy, but make a big difference for the astrophotographer in your life, especially if they're doing a lot of work from the backyard and a one shot color camera. It's also helpful as a luminance filter if you're shooting from in town. Don't use a luminance filter. Use one of these. It You lose a little bit, obviously, but it still gives you that punch um, that you're looking for. So that's something that you could add in there, especially if you just started astrophotography and you need a little expansion on that. So um, that's kind of a cool one. Um, advancing one shot color imagers um big big trend right now is the multi-band narrow band filters uh, they're all over the place now there's a lot of really high quality ones that are actually coming out um uh, optolong has a bunch of them out right now there's the l enhance there's the l extreme which i've got right here um and then there's their new ultimate filter which is three nanometer band pass i think it's down there it's awesome i haven't tried one yet but um, these are awesome filters. Um, if you have a, uh, one shot color, uh, camera, let me get this in the chat. There we go. Nisi. Um, if you've got someone who's doing a one shot color or a, uh, mirrorless or DSLR camera from home, um, these multi-band narrow band filters are excellent. Uh, they're also there's there's a bunch of companies that have them out right now uh there's the radian triad filters as well um but they're uh almost a must nowadays if you're shooting with a one shot color camera from in town or you know when the moon's up big bright moon those are very nice filters to have so but go out and check out one of those it's a nice gift to help the, definitely expanding the capabilities of anybody who's using a one shot color camera for those multi-band narrow bands uh, oh yeah, we could talk about that really quick. Um, how does a filter attach to the 183? Just so happens I have my new 183 right here. Um, if you're looking for another gift idea, um, and you need to flip through filters, where'd it go? I had it right here. Oh, here it is. Looks like my mouse. Um, Starzona filter sliders. These are a filter drawer. They just redesigned it too. It's very nice. Um, but these take your 183 or whatever your camera is. They make different attachments. There's the threads. Threads right to the front there. And there you go. Ready for filters. So uh, that is the star. Is, let me just make this a little bigger real quick as someone asked. Um, and I didn't have a uh, thing on it. Um, the Starzona filter sliders. Let me try to focus this a little bit. There we go. Um, this is their filter drawer. Star Arizona makes all kinds of cool stuff, um, for everybody. Um, but that's how that would attach right there. And then you'd get the right spacers to thread in the front to your flattener or camera. 
but that's another cool gift idea because it really solves a lot of problems um, with your setup there. So I had that laying down here. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, it just so happens that I had all that laying around. So yeah, that's the problem when you do telescopes. You just have random expensive things floating all over the place. So, you know, it's how we roll. So I'm a professional. Um, but yeah, little things like that are definitely uh, worth checking out. Now, if you've got a more advanced imager um, there who's got a monochrome camera, we, we all know what dark road this is. Um, filters are also there. Um, this is a lot steeper region of filters, though. Expanding a narrow band set is something that many of us, when we have a narrow band or monochrome camera, want to do. We spent a bunch of money on the camera. We got our filter wheel. And you probably got your LRGB set. Maybe you got a narrowband hydrogen filter. But the H-alpha filter, the narrowband filters always come last because they're spendy, um, depending on what camera you're using. But um, usually that's something that we all kind of throw in slowly over time. So if you're looking to help someone in astrophotography world um, expand their capabilities, a nice filter might be something to add. An H-alpha filter, O3 s2 those are the big players right there and um, there's a bunch of them out there you probably want to figure out which one they've had their eye on because they're not particularly cheap um, maybe they got a bigger camera and they're looking to get a larger filter or you're looking to get a narrower bandpass filter upgrading uh, the bandpass capabilities um, that's always a, again it's all about kind of expanding that capability of the person you're looking for so uh, filters are very nice um, you know, there's, uh, an array of them out there. So, you know, getting a nice set of filters takes time and it can be really helpful. Um, you know, maybe you can help by getting one of those filters that they're looking for. Cause you know, that's something they've had their eye on. Uh, but do make sure you know which ones that maybe they've been looking at because again, they get a little spendy. Um, and maybe there's a very specific one that they're looking for. Uh, so yeah, but if you're looking for filters, you probably know what you're getting into. These are all chroma filters. Excellent. There's Astrodon, Botter, Optolong, uh, make some really nice filters for, and Attila, I think is the new one on the market right now. All of them make nice filters. So, um, anyway, so there's a wide variety of stuff that you can definitely go out and check out there if you've got an imager in your life. Um, so there's that. Now the big thing, cameras. Now cameras are constantly changing. So if you bought a camera five years ago, there's a good chance it there's a bigger, badder one on the market now. New cameras are coming out every year, pushing this uh, astrophotography hobby forward and the capabilities of it. Um, so you, I know all of us are always looking for the next uh, big thing for cameras, and that's a major upgrade on the system. Uh, these are generally pretty big purchases. So, again, it's one of those things that you're going to want to keep an eye on for. Someone must really love you if they're going to go out and buy you a camera. Um, some of the most advanced uh, cameras on the market are using this new IMX571 sensor. That would be like the ZWO 2600 um, I don't remember the QHY variant of it. There's some other ones out there, but that that sensor, as well as the uh, the big brother to that, the IMX455, which is a full frame monster. This guy right here, the ZWO 6200. Um, Santa must be very. You must have been very very good if you're getting one of these under the tree. So, um, but. Uh, filters, I'm sorry, filters, cameras are always something, uh, that people are looking at. Maybe you're trying to get into astrophotography and you don't know what to get. Um, you know, you could start with something as basic as like a Canon Rebel. I know they're not the greatest thing, you know, in comparison, but the nice thing about maybe looking at like a DSLR or a Canon mirrorless camera or, you know, any manufacturer is, um, uh, you can take pictures of the family. You could use it on Christmas Day. Pop that out of the box, charge the battery, and take some awesome pictures of the family with it. And then it can double as an astrophotography camera. So if you've got someone who's been interested in imaging 
and they don't know where to start, a, a nice camera from, you know, Canon, Nikon, Sony, all the major players um, is something to check out. Maybe if they're looking to get more specific, um, you know, the ZWO cameras are very nice. Most There's a lot of good ones out there that aren't crazy expensive out there. Uh, those 183, I think, is just under $1,000. I think they're still running a special as of the recording of this. Um, I don't work for ZWO. I don't know anything about them other than the cameras seem to work nicely. So uh, there's that. So that's always an option. Uh, but yeah, a nice camera upgrade is always welcomed. Um, they're not in a very big box either, but it's exciting to get a new uh, toy to go play with. Um, but yeah, a camera is a nice upgrade as well. Um, another thing real quick that I forgot to mention are kind of accessories as we kind of get to the end of our episode here. Today went really quick. Sorry about that. Um, but there's a lot of uh, questions I know they're floating out there. Basic accessories for a telescope. You know, maybe you have a, I'm going to try to focus this real quick. Um, uh, maybe you have a refractor and I'm, and, uh, sorry. Eh, come on camera. Focus on the port and stuff. There you go. Maybe you have a telescope already that you're, you're using and you want to expand the capabilities a little bit more. You know, maybe you need a reducer. Um, this is a star zone apex. I just had this one available. Um, but there's different accessories for the telescope um, because that can expand it. Maybe you have a schmidt cassegrain and like a Celestron C8 or something. You want to get into imaging, a Hyperstar maybe, or a Rasa if you really want to go uh, full bore at that point. Um, another thing I've got from Starzona real quick is their Nexus reducer. If you have a uh, Newtonian telescope, you can pop one of these on there. It speeds it up quite a bit. It's 0.75 uh, reducer coma corrector there those are out now too you can check those out but little little knickknacks like that are really nice accessories to have for imaging because they can expand the capability of the telescope that maybe that person's using so rather than having to go buy a telescope to do something different maybe you can do that with accessories that wouldn't be too difficult to do um so that's pretty much it for today um hopefully that gave you some ideas uh you know thanks for hanging out with us on friday i know that was kind of a quick episode but um good luck happy hunting on all of that uh you know like i said before if you like what you see here at the what's up webcast please go ahead and subscribe leave a like on a video it lets us know we're doing a good job helps us keep this going um Next week, I think, will be a pretty popular episode. We're going to be talking about amateur astronomy research, like what you can do with your telescope to basically uh, do some research um, from your system. Um, this is, I find a lot of people have interest in this. Maybe you're, you know, maybe you're overtaking pretty pictures and you want to contribute to something bigger. Um, amateur astronomy research is something that uh, many, many people could do. Um, so uh, definitely check that out next week. We'll be talking about that. And then tonight, uh, 7 p.m. Pacific, if you want to join me and hang out and explore the night sky, we're doing another virtual star party through my outreach program, Focus Astronomy. That is at the Focus Astronomy YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be doing that again 7 p.m. tonight, weather permitting. Um, weather is looking good. We'll be doing live stack imaging for about an hour, hour and a half uh, from our remote telescope. Uh, big Esprit 150, 6200 camera, digging out some really popular targets tonight, um, including the Horsehead and the Witch. Uh, so come out and check that out. It should be a lot of fun. Now, if you've got questions, uh, now's the time to get into that. Um, I know some... So we obviously talked about... Uh, let me just go back through here. We talked about light, supp light suppression filters uh, for imaging. Yes. They are definitely worth the investment, especially if you're shooting in a one-shot color camera. It's almost a must to get rid of some of those um, issues that you're going to have when shooting in town. So definitely good for that. Uh, Schmidt Cassegrain collimators. Again, Hotech has a very specific one for Schmidt's. It's kind of complicated, but I'll let you reach out to Hotech about that. Uh, Two-inch eyepieces. 
from Skywatcher. We don't really have any plans right now to do eyepieces um, here at Skywatcher. Reason being is there's so many good options on the market right now that it's kind of a hard part to dig into and be successful on it. Um, so for the time being, I think we'll just focus on our mounts and telescopes and all that fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of my statement on that. Uh, Nisi filters, uh, Nisi is a great photographic filter company. It's N I S I, um, Google them, check it out. Uh, the natural night filters are awesome, especially if you're a big nightscape photographer, they make them in all different sizes. Uh, go over there, check them out. Um, and see what you can get from there. Uh, we talked about the 183 in the filter drawer, the Star Arizona filter sliders. Uh, reach out to the guys at Star Arizona. Um, st tell Steve or Scott or Dean over there that Kevin from Skywatcher sent you, and they'll take care of you. All kinds of cool little accessories for Star Arizona, including the filter sliders. Um, and this is the new version. Um, that work on all kinds of different cameras it makes it really easy to flip out filters without having to, you know, take all your crap apart in the middle of the night and drop something and then call me saying you broke it and it's not under warranty. And then you're really unhappy because you have to spend a bunch of extra money on it. So get one of these blasted things, put your filter in there and quit messing around with your stuff at night. Uh, dew heaters, dew heaters are a great option. Um, in Arizona, there's not a lot of dew. I say that right now, but last night it rained, and now we have tons of dew outside. But dew heaters are always nice to have, especially if you're in one of those areas um, that really, really needs it. So a dew heater might be something to check out. You can get them on Amazon now for, like, camera lenses. They run on USBs. It's it's kind of crazy. So what will they think of next? Um Oh, here's a good one. Any idea when scope production will be caught up on the 5th? The 5th of uh, never is when that will be done. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're working really hard, and so is our factory. Um, our factory doesn't get enough credit for the people that work over there. Um, I don't know that they'll actually see this either. But um, the team over at the factory is a phenomenal big chunk of people that makes everything you can think of um, from the Skywatcher lineup. They work really hard getting things done as fast as they can at the quality that they can. So um, hopefully late in 2022, things will start to look better, but I can't say that for certain, but it's still going to be a while before things are back to normal, normal. Um, it's going to be a while before there's scopes basically sitting on a shelf um, again. So Sorry to say, uh, get used to it right now. Um, it's kind of out of a lot of people's control. Raw materials uh, from COVID got hit. I know we're all tired of hearing about that. That's the reality of it. Raw materials, uh, a lot of people are fighting over that right now. So uh, costs will probably go up. That's just kind of the reality. You're seeing it everywhere. Um, so raw materials are a big thing. Shipping delays, which are completely out of our capability to handle. So there's a lot of problems right now. So if you're waiting for something to be sitting on a shelf, you're, it's going to be a while. Sorry. And I wish it wasn't that way either, but that's, there's nothing we can, it's completely out of our, uh, power, um, on that. So we're trying factories working as hard as they can, as I'm sure many other people are too. It's not just us. It's everyone. It's not just the telescope industry either. It's everywhere everyone's working hard to do that so uh let's see how many years away do you think uh amateur adaptive optics that's an interesting conversation actually so there's active optics which are out right now active optics um starlight express makes an active optic system s big makes a active optic system um so Active optics is basically where you have like a lens sitting in front of your camera that's adjusting for various issues. It can help uh, make things a little bit better, especially for like mount inconsistencies and stuff like that. They're a little spendy. Um, they're, they do help with longer focal length optics. Um, adaptive optics is where the optic itself is actually being manipulated in order to keep up with the seeing conditions. Um, that's a very complex thing to do because you actually need to have readings on the seeing conditions themselves. So 
I don't know. Five to ten years, maybe. I hope you're willing to pay for it because it's not going to be cheap. Um, if they do something, I'd probably see it be beneficial on larger optical systems. I wouldn't be surprised if Plane Wave did it first because those guys are ridiculously good at what they do. Um, and they're always pushing to go bigger. But it's a very complex subject that I really don't know enough about. So um, all I can say is if you want act adaptive optics on your telescope, I hope you're willing to pay for it because it won't be cheap. Um, anyway, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. We kind of filled out the hour better than I thought we would. Uh, join us next week for... Uh, science see what we can do with our telescopes and then if you want to hang out with me tonight join me 7 p.m pacific time um, if you want to know more you can always go over to focus astronomy uh on the youtube channel focus astronomy um, and check out the live stream that we'll be doing this evening um that's also sponsored by skywatcher uh, we're using our esprit 150 and zwo 6200 set up tonight from the skies away remote observatories um but we'll be happy to see you guys there tonight i uh, got about a dozen objects we'll be observing. Uh, should be a lot of fun. But until then, have a safe day. Um, appreciate if I see you tonight. If not, we'll see you next Friday. Take care. Have a safe weekend. And uh, clear skies, everyone. Take care. Bye.